Hello everyone and welcome to lesson one of my App Game Kit 2 tutorial series. Today we will be talking about the basics of tier one. So I have App Game Kit 2 loaded here. I have it on Steam and uh, this is what you're going to see when you first open it. All you're going to want to do is hit the new button and it'll give you a window to name your project and select a path for it. I already have the path preset to my second hard drive and I'm just going to name this tutorial series lesson one and now you just hit create and it will create it. Um, normally you'll keep all this but for now I'm just gonna delete it so I can explain the basics so if you're brand new to programming how programming works is you write code in a editor like this and then the computer will um, compile it into machine code that it will then run um, code is uh, generally executed from top to bottom just like how you read a book and uh, it it can uh, it doesn't necessarily have to go from top to bottom uh, it might jump around like if you've ever read a choose your own adventure book kinda like that um, but it'll always go from top to bottom it'll just skip around so the first thing you'll want to learn about are comments comments are um, in tier one can either be two uh, forward slashes which you can find to the left of your right shift button has it's also the question mark button that'll make a comment so it should appear in light gray when uh, comments are ignored by the computer so when it converts the code into machine code it will just completely ignore that text another way to make a comment in tier one is by REM that uh, all this is non-case sensitive, so it can be lowercase or capital or both. Doesn't matter. Um, and then you can put another comment. Um, again, these are just completely ignored. You can write whatever you want in there. Generally, use them to um, to keep track of what your code is doing. Um, it's a good practice to comment all your code. So the next thing we will learn about is variables. Um, variables are pretty simple in tier one. You just give it a name like, you know, apples, and then you say it equals, say, like, ten. So you have ten apples. That's it. Um, this is called uh, initialization with an equals sign. Basically, it means that apples, the variable apples, is equal to the number ten. Now, variables can have multiple types. You can. This is an integer. You can also have. Um, uh, you could have a float, uh, which is a floating point number. So basically, that means it it has uh, a decimal. So it, that could be like you know five point. Two seven eight. If you wanted that, um, and then you also have uh, a string. A string is a a a line of characters. A character is you know a, a letter, a number, a symbol. So a string is basically a sentence, but it can be any length that you want. So if we have an example string, you could have. Uh, Hello, John, and that would be a string. So, if you want to assign a variable before, um, if you want to create a variable without assigning any number to it, you can do that by um, doing your variable name and and then as and then the type. So you could have oranges as integer, or oranges as float, or oranges as string. Um, 
and that will just set it to the default value, which um, for numbers that would be zero, and for a string it would just be um, nothing. So the next thing is modifying variables. Um, for uh, numbers like the integer and the float, you can perform math operations on it. So you could do apples equals. Anytime you want to change a variable, you put the variable name and then equals. Um, so apples equals say apple apples or well, let's do uh, 5 times 10. By the way, um, in coding, in pretty much every coding language there is, um, the asterisk is equal to multiplication. Um, and the slash, the forward, or backslash, I think that is, is equal to um, division. Because there, there's not really a dedicated... Uh, well, if you used x for multiplication, you would run into the pro problem at, of, you know, if your variable is named x, that wouldn't work. And um, the division symbol... Uh, well, there's not an official division symbol on your keyboard, and so the closest one is the percentage sign, but that is actually used for a different math operation in programming, which I will cover later. Um, you can also assign... You can also use other variable names as numbers in your math operation. So if you wanted to do uh, apples equals apples times 2, every time this is uh, ran, run, um, it would uh, double the number in apples. So, also with strings, if we have an example string like we have above, and we uh, there's something called concatenation, which is basically joining two strings together. At first, this might be uh, this might sound dumb. Like if you did hello t plus and then John, the final string would be the same as up here, hello space John. But uh, this may not seem extremely useful. But if you did something like um, you have up here name is John, then you could do hello plus name, and then that, the final string, will change mattering what the name is up here, and of course that could be user input, or maybe y you can put like, um, I have, uh, apples, apples. And then that will say, for instance, here we have uh, apples equals 50, and then we're going to double it, so it's going to be 100, so this would uh, finally contain, I have 100 apples. Um, that's about it for modifying variables. A few extra things are um, this division, well, the percentage symbol uh, is a more complex math uh, operator. Uh, since we have a hundred here, I'm gonna use say three. So we could do apples equals apples, uh, and that's called modulo or modulos um, or just mod. Basically, if you remember in elementary school when you did division before they taught you about decimals, you would always most likely end up with a remainder on the division problem. So say you know. 3 divided by 5 would be, or, well, like, 6 divided by 5 would be 1 remainder 1. Modulo gives you that remainder. So, say, apples modulo 3 would give you, if I pull up a calculator, so you'd have 100 mod, uh, mod, we should, mod, uh, 3 equals 1, because... If you look, 100 divided by 3 equals 33 
and then there's going to be an extra. So if you do 33 times 3, you get 99. So this would set apples to 1. So now this would say I have 1 apples. Um, which is in proper English, but the computer does not know that. The next thing we will learn about is how to see uh, what we're doing. Well, no, not I'm not going to do that yet. So another thing we need to learn is control statements, or um, what else are they called? Flow control. So that's things like uh, if. So you could say um, if apples... If we have more than 50 apples, then we're going to do something. And say if we have more than 50 apples, we're going to set apples to 10. Um, you could also uh, condense this into if apples is greater than 50, then apples equals 10. That just puts it all in one line. If you are... Um, you can only have one command if you're doing the then, but if you're going to have it over multiple lines because you need multiple commands, uh, then you do not put the then there, and you have to remember to put an end if to tell the program that that is the end of the if statement. Um, uh, the greater sign symbol, you can have uh, greater than, less than, uh, greater than or equal to or less than and equal to. All those are valid and when when you call this this isn't actually special to the if statement. You can say um, uh, it basically it returns when you call that you could do like apples equals apples greater than 50. If if apples is greater than 50, then it's going to return a 1, and then apples will be equal to 1. If it's less than 50, or equal to 50, it's going to return a 0, and then apples is going to be equal to 0. So the if right here is just checking if if the, if it's getting a 1 or a 0. That's all if statements do. So you could you could just say uh, if 1... Oh, no. If 1 then apples equals 10, that will always be true. Or you could do if 0, then apples equals 10, then that will never be true. Um, another thing with all this is you, um, you can have multiple uh, statements in an if statement. So you can say if apples is greater than 50 and apples is less than 60. So that would that would only set apples to 10 if apples is greater than 50 and less than 60. Um, there's also the or. Um, so you can say if apples is greater than 50 or apples is less than 20. So that uh, apples equals 10 will be executed if apples, if there's more than 50 apples, or if there are less than 20 apples. Um, next, we should probably look into loops, as they are very useful. So you have your uh, while loop, so that would be if you did something like um, a counter and set that to equal one uh, zero, and you say while counter is greater than uh, or well let's go less than ten, you would have then some code and then end while, and so then here you would say you know counter equals counter plus one, and that would loop over this section of code ten times. So when it gets to the end of the while, it will jump back to here run an if statement on counter is less than 10. If it is, then it will run again, and so on, so on. If it, if it, um, if counter is equal or greater than 10, then it will skip, uh, to the line after the end while. 
Another form of loop is the for loop, which is like this. If you have a variable i, you do not have to initialize it because you do it right in the variable, or I mean in the loop. So i equals 0 to 100. And then uh, instead of calling end for, you actually call next i. So that will loop 100 times. Another um, useful thing to do with a for loop is if you add in the word step and then say 10, that means every time this is run, i will be incremented by 10. So that means that this will only be executed uh, 10 times because 10 times 10 is 100. Um, that's just an easier way of doing this up here, um, much more compact and clean. Another type of loop is the do loop. Uh, the do loop is just an infinite loop. It will just continue going forever. Um, there are ways to stop it from going forever, um, but I will not be covering that right now. Um, and then the final type of loop is, what was it, the repeat loop. So the repeat is basically the f uh, while loop, but inverted. So um, instead of doing your logic up here, you would do it below. So repeat until counter is less than 10. If that doesn't make sense to you, here, if, say, I had counter equal to 12, this code would never execute. It would just be completely skipped. With a repeat until loop, um, it will execute at least once, uh, because it, it executes the code, then checks if the condition is true, and if it is, it goes, it d loops again, and so on, so on. Um, so that's just a, a, a clean way to have your code execute at least one time. Next, we should probably learn about um, incrementing variables better. Uh, in, like up here, I have counter equals counter plus one. Um, that, that is one way of doing it, but um, tier one provides you with some commands inc for increment, so increment counter, that would add 1 to counter, or you can do dec, decrement counter. And I am, um, I don't know if you can actually pass a number in there to find out, uh, to, um, increment it by that much, I can find out. Uh, on App Game Kit's website, they have um, their documentation, which is very useful. I still use it, even though I um, nearly know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so yes, you can actually do increment uh, your variable name and then comma and then a number, so that would add 10 to counter. Or you could do decrement uh, counter by 50, something like that. That's just a, a, a simpler... Um, and smaller way to uh, change your variables. So uh, I think I'm going to end the lesson here. I think I have covered everything that will be needed to be covered. Um, if you are confused about any of this, feel free to leave a comment. Um, also remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And I will see you in Lesson 2, which we will actually be making a window and putting things on the window.